Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 7, Associated Ratios and the Value of a Ratio. Today we're going to talk about how to understand the relationship between ratios and fractions, how to describe the fraction a over b associated with the ratio a to b as the value of the ratio a to b, and how to understand that when given a ratio a to b, different ratios can be formed from the numbers a and b. So this last objective is kind of like what we've been doing, looking at a to b and figuring how to create different ratio, ratios from that original ratio. These two are fairly new. So we're talking about how to create a fraction from a ratio and how it is how it becomes the value of that ratio and then understanding those relationships and how to use them. So we're going to start out fairly simple. We're going to talk about the gumballs here. So since this problem doesn't say ratio, so if you read it, it says, which of the following correctly models the number of red gumballs is five-thirds the number of white gumballs? So since the word ratio isn't in here, we know five-thirds is a fraction and not a ratio. Okay, so if you look at A, B, C, and D, which one would you think shows me that the number of red gumballs is five-thirds the number of white gumballs? Okay, if you said B, you would be correct. Okay, so you're really taking that ratio. So here we would say the ratio is 5 to 3. So for every 5 red gumballs, I have 3 white gumballs. I take that ratio and I turn it into a fraction, and that fraction becomes the value. So the value then tells me that if I have red gumballs, and I know the number of red gumballs is 5 thirds the number of white gumballs, I can use 5 thirds and the number of red gumballs to help me find the number of white gumballs. Okay, so we'll take it another step further here, talking about films A and B. The length of film A is 5 units long. The length of film B is 7 units long. So I know that the ratio of film A to B is 5 to 7. So here, 5 is a value and 7 is a value. But the ratio 5 to 7 is not a value. It's a comparison of these two values. To turn it into a value, I look at it and notice that the length of film A is 5 sevenths the length of film B. So since it's 5 sevenths the length of film B, I know I can use this and multiplication and the length of film B to find film A. Or I could turn it around and say film B is 7 fifths the length of film A. So I can use the length of film A and 7 fifths to find the length of film B. So in its simplest, you should be able to give me the value of the ratio just by telling me what the fraction of the ratio would become, noticing that there are two different values that could come out of it. All right, so exercise one we're not going to do on the video. We're going to do this at a different time. So you do not need to do this right now. I want you to turn to exercise two. With exercise two, we're talking about a food company that produces peanut butter. And from the problem, we find out that five out of every nine customers prefer new extra chunky peanut butter. So five out of every nine. So right now, this is a fraction. Five out of nine is a fraction. But I can use that fraction to help me find different information. So I can use that fraction and write it as a ratio. So I can say that people who like extra crunchy to total people is 5 to 9. Notice we're not writing them in fraction form because of the fact that we're taking our ratios, making fractions, and using those fractions as values. So we're going to stop writing ratios in fraction form. I can also say that people who like regular crunchy, mind you, we know that we're talking about regular crunchy because it says up here, 
Okay, so the company hosts a sampling of its new product at a grocery store and finds five out of seven like the extra crunchy, and then what's left is that regular, the normal crunchy. Since there's a total of nine people and five of them prefer the extra crunchy, I know that I can take that total of nine, subtract the five people that like the extra crunchy, and know that there were four people who liked the regular crunchy. So even though the problem didn't tell me flat out that there were four people that liked regular crunchy, I could use the fact that I know that nine is the total, and that out of those nine, five liked the extra crunchy to find out how many like the regular crunchy. So in my ratio, I can say people who like regular crunchy to total people is four to nine. I can also compare the extra crunchy likers to the regular crunchy likers. So people who like extra crunchy to regular, I'd say, to people who like regular crunchy is, so five people like the extra, to four liking the regular. Last but not least, people who like the regular crunchy to people who like the extra crunchy is four to five. I can also turn it around. It's so then now, so now that I've found these four different ratios that I can write, and yes, we can also say people who like, we can also say that there is one more person who likes extra crunchy. Okay, so I can use that information as well. Alright, so now I'm going to take these and I'm going to take each ratio and I am going to write it as a value. So again, we're going to write it as a fraction and by writing it as a fraction, we're placing a value on it. And I can use that value and multiplication to find other numbers. So that's why we call it the multiplicative comparison. It tells me what I would have to multiply to go from one number to the other. So I can use this when I'm working with my actual numbers because we know that there's way more than just five people who like the extra crunchy because there's way more than nine people in the grocery store. It's just five out of the nine people that were surveyed. So I can use that multiplicative comparison to help me find out the number of total people that like the extra chunky and I can use it to help me figure out how many containers and stuff should I make. So as a manager, this is really important information. So first, let's look at the values here. So I can say that the number of people who like extra crunchy peanut butter is five-ninths the total number of people. Okay, so I'm taking it and I'm saying the number of people who like the extra crunchy peanut butter is five-ninths of the total number of people. So now five-ninths is the value that I've associated with this ratio, and I can use five-ninths in multiplication, so I can say that if, you know, let's say that the total number of people here was 500. I know that five-ninths of that 500 people would like the extra crunchy. I can say the number of people who like regular crunchy peanut butter is four-ninths of the total number of people. Okay, so again, I'm just taking that ratio and associating a value with it. So four to nine being, so it's because of the fact that it's listed first is regular to total, then I know that I, the comparison has to be the number of people who like regular is four-ninths. That has to be listed first when writing that value. 
is four-ninths the number of total people. So the next one, the next two I want you to try on your own. So I want you to try to write value with the sentences for the, these two. You don't have to do the one for the one more person, just do it for the last two ratios that we wrote, the five to four and the four to five. When you come back, we'll check your answer. So your last two should be the number of people who like extra crunchy peanut butter is five-fourths of the number of people who like, ooh, I'm running out of space here, regular crunchy peanut butter. Okay, and the next one, the number of people who like regular crunchy peanut butter is four-fifths of the number of people who like extra crunchy peanut butter. Okay, and again, it's important to write these in the correct order because the way that we write this actually helps us set up any multiplication problems. So I have to make sure that I'm writing down what I'm comparing correctly. So here, since I compared the number of people who like regular crunchy to extra crunchy, I have to make sure that the value matches. So the number of people who like regular crunchy peanut butter is four-fifths of the number of people who like extra crunchy peanut butter. If I were to change that number around and say, say that I put this as five-fourths, I would be associating the five with the regular and the four with the extra. And I know that that is incorrect. So again, order here is really important. So now I want to use this information as the store manager or as the producer of the peanut butter. I want to use this information in planning. So if I'm going to make 90,000 containers of crunchy peanut butter, how many containers should I make of the extra crunchy and how many should I make of the regular crunchy? Because I don't want to make too much extra crunchy and I also don't want to make too little of the extra crunchy. So that's why I surveyed the people. So my survey should help me determine how much I should make. They should match or at least be very close. So what we want to look at here is we want to look at what information that we listed above. So what values that we listed above would be helpful in helping us figure out how many containers of extra crunchy peanut butter to make and regular crunchy peanut butter to make. So let's start with the extra crunchy. Well I know that 90,000 is the total number of containers. So I know since 90,000 is the total number of containers, I know that I want to use one of the values that includes the total. So I either want to use 5 ninths or 4 ninths. Now, I want to know of the 90,000, how many extra chunky should I make? So to help me figure this out, I'm actually going to read my problems here. So extra chunky PB is five ninths of the total number of people. So here I know that I want to use, now it's pretty easy because my comparisons for total are two completely separate things. So my comparison here is extra crunchy to total and my comparison here is regular to total. So since I want to know the number of extra crunchy containers, I know that I'm going to use the value that involves the extra crunchy peanut butter and the total number of people. Okay, and how I do this is I know that, so like it says here, the number of people who like extra crunchy, so if I write it out in words, I can say extra crunchy is five ninths of the total. Okay, so extra crunchy is what I don't know. Is would be my equal sign. Five ninths is already a value of, 
turns to multiplication, the total, the total in this case is 90,000 containers. So I know that of those 90,000 containers, five-ninths of them should be extra crunchy. When I do that math, okay, so notice I used the wording here to help me figure out how to set up my problem. This is going to come in handy for the next problem. So five-ninths of that total, so I can take five-ninths of tells me to multiply that total When I multiply, I put this over 1, okay, and I can say that 5 times 9 is 45, so I keep all these extras, so 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I know that 9 times 1 is 9. Then I know I need to simplify. 45 divided by 9, just ignore the zeros right now, is 5. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros that I have to keep because there's none down here to cancel them out. So I know that of those 90,000, 50,000 of them have to be the extra crunchy peanut butters. We can go one step further now, and I'm going to go here to give myself some more room. Since I know that I'm making 90,000, and I'm going to make 50,000 of them extra crunchy, I know 40,000 of them would have to be the regular crunchy. I could also use the other value, so I know that 4 ninths of the total is regular crunchy. So I would again take the 4 ninths times the 90,000 and it will give me 40,000. Okay. Again, we'll work on this more, some more in class. So we're going to do another example together and then you're going to try one on your own. But this one is a little bit harder. If the company decides to produce 2,000 containers of regular crunchy peanut butter, how many containers of extra crunchy peanut butter would it produce? So now we're comparing, we're using the values for regular crunchy and extra crunchy. So it's a little bit harder because I have two options here. Okay, I know that 2,000 is the total number of regular crunchy, or it's the number of regular crunchy. So I'm going to use that to help me find my value that I want to use. Okay, so I'm going to erase so we can read a little bit more carefully here. So I know, so I'm looking here. So the number of extra crunchy peanut butter is five-fourths of the number of regular crunchy. Down here, regular crunchy is four-fifths of the number of extra crunchy. Well, I have to look. Do I know the t do I know the number of extra crunchy or do I know the number of regular crunchy? And if I look carefully, so if I look over here, I know the number of regular crunchy. Since I know the number of regular crunchy, I need to use the one that has the regular crunchy. So here it says the number of regular crunchy and I'm trying to find the extra crunchy. So I have to use the value 5 fourths. Okay, because of the fact, so 5 fourths of the number of regular crunchy. So you have to look here, since I know the number of regular crunchy, I have to use the one that has that at the end. Again, we'll practice with this some more, but that's really what you're looking for. So. You have to look at what you know and what you don't know. So it's kind of like what I'm trying to find will be listed first. Then I'll use that value and what I know to find my answer. So it'll be listed that same way in your value statement. What I'm trying to find, the value, and what I know. So let's go to the next piece. 
So I know that the number of regular crunchy is five fourths of the number of I'm sorry, the number of extra crunchy is five fourths the number of regular crunchy. In this case, I don't know what extra crunchy is, but I know that it's going to be equal to, so extra crunchy is equal to five fourths, and I'm just replacing is with the equal sign. Of means multiplication, and we know the number of regular crunchy in this case is 2,000 because it tells us 2,000 containers of regular crunchy. And we can interchange people and containers because we're using the number of people to help us determine the number of containers. So I'm taking 5 fourths of the 2,000. And another way to look at it is I want to have more extra crunchy than regular crunchy because more people like extra crunchy than regular crunchy. So if I want this answer to be larger than 2,000, then what I multiply 2,000 by has to be bigger than 1. And 5 fourths is bigger than 1. If I had used 4 fifths, that's smaller than 1, which would have given me a smaller answer than 2,000. And that wouldn't have worked because that would leave a lot of people without extra crunchy peanut butter and would probably upset a lot of people. All right, so if I multiply here, I do 5 times 2 gives me 10,000. And I do 4 times 1, so over 4. If I divide this, it gives me 2,500. So I know that if I make 2,000 containers of regular crunchy peanut butter, that I should make 2,500 containers of extra crunchy peanut butter. So this is what we're talk about, talking about with that objective of knowing that the ratio A to B those values of A and B can be used to help you to find different numbers. Okay, so if I were to put 2,000 and 2,500, if I were to, so 2,000 regular to, let's write this over here, so 2,000 regular to 2,500 extra crunchy. If I were to simplify these all the way, okay, both of these can be divided by, oops, that's too many zeros. Both of these can be divided by 500. And when you do that, you end up with 4, 2, 5 sorry, 4 to 5, which, if you go back, is our original ratio of people who like regular crunchy to extra crunchy. Okay, so we used the value of that ratio to help us find the missing piece. So here was the first part of the new ratio that we wanted, and we were able to use that value, 5 fourths, to help us find that missing piece. All right, so there's one more question here. There's E. I want you to try and solve this on your own, so I want you to decide which value to use on your own. Do the multiplication on your own, and then when you come to class, we will go over the answers.